Okay, let's talk about short circuiting. Now, short circuiting is a behavior that's built into JavaScript whenever you're evaluating anything. And you use the AND operator between the things that you're evaluating. So here I've got a statement where I'm saying 1 AND 1. Now, this isn't a binary AND. This is just the logical AND operator. So here I'm saying take the number 1. And then I want you to consider the number 2. Now, if this is true, it will go ahead and evaluate the second thing. If this is false, then it's not going to ever get to it. And this is where the short circuiting comes in. It reads it from left to right, and it only continues as long as everything it finds is true. As soon as it hits something that's false, it stops. So I can have 1 and 1 and 1 and 1 and then throw a zero in there, and then one. It's going to evaluate all these up to this point, and then it stops, and it will never evaluate this final one. That is the short circuiting. If we move that zero up to the very beginning, this is where it would stop. As soon as it hits a false value, if there's an AND operator coming afterwards, it doesn't continue. So true and false, just as a reminder, these are our falsy values. So zero, false, null, undefined, empty string, or not a number. These are the only things in JavaScript that are considered to be falsy, negative, false. If you have a value or an object that is anything other than what's in this list, it will be considered true. And we can use that to our advantage inside any expression that we want to evaluate. So I have two sample expressions that I started with here one with a set of parentheses, one with a set of curly braces around them. Uh, now, when you're doing things like this, it is important to put the semicolon at the end so we don't uh, run into issues with the automatic semicolon in injection. This is going to be evaluated inside the parentheses. This will be evaluated inside the curly braces. It doesn't really matter if we run this script. No errors are going to happen. We're just saying, here's something that I need you to evaluate. Now, normally, you're going to be doing things inside of an if statement or a ternary operator. So I can say if this and this console, or I have my console log pointing to log, so I will use that, log, yes. If both of those are true, it's going to write out the word yes. Don't get it. That's because the first one was false. There we go. I get no, because this first one was false, which means it evaluated that one as falsy, never bothered to even look at this one. So that's short-circuiting. Now, how can I use this in my code? Well, aside from if statements, we also have ternary operators. So inside of here, let's put a 1 and 1. Both of these are going to evaluate to true. And if they do, I'm going to write out yes. Otherwise, I will write out no. Really want to put that uh, in on the end there. OK, yes, both of them were true. If I change this one to a falsy value, no. If I change this one to a falsy value, no. If I go and change this second one back, it doesn't matter. It's still going to be no. Put this first one back to 1. Yes. All right. So if both of them are true, we get the yes. That's how the ternary operator works. It's like a simplified little if-else statement. I have a video about it. I'll put a link down in the comments if you want. Now, we have an expression here being evaluated. And it will actually run even if I don't put the parentheses around this. It still works. Now. We've been working with just ones and zeros, but we can replace these with anything we want to evaluate. Maybe I wanted to find out if the property inside of object up here, inside this object, I want to know if uh, the property called bool is actually true. So if that is true and obj.prop is greater than 40, write out yes. There we go. It works. 
So even without the parentheses around this, we have an expression, or two expressions really, that are being evaluated. This one and this one. We can use this to our advantage if we want functions to be called if something is going to happen, or if some property is set to some value. So I could say if obj.bool, I can do that. I'm just checking to see, does this property exist? obj.bool bool true, or sorry, equals true, and obj.prop. second yes here. Change this one to obj.prop. Uh, okay, instead of the properties, let's talk about other things. Num. That variable num is equal to 42. I change that to zero. No, because num is zero, which was one of our falsy values. I don't have both things being true, so that will run. And give me the no answer. Here, I'll we'll just duplicate this line. I'm going to comment out a couple of these just so we don't get a really long string of yeses and nos. What if I want to do instead of the num check the function f? Okay, that works because the value of bool is true and f is a function. It does exist. This is a function object. It's not one of these things, so therefore it's true. If I run the function f and we compare them, I get a no because the function f is returning num, which is currently set to zero. If I put this back to 42, let's say I'm going to use obj.prop and I return that. That's the number 42. Okay, that's a non falsy value g, the function g, doing it this way, just checks to see if it exists. And if I run the function g, I get a no. Now the reason I get a function g here, uh, uh, sorry, the reason I get a no for the function g is it is logging out the number 42, which is why 42 appears here in the console, but it does not have a return statement, and functions that do not have return statements will by default return undefined, and that is one of our falsy values. So that's why we got a yes for the f. So we got a yes with the function f, but a no for the function g because this one has no return statement, so it's returning undefined. That's a falsy value. This was true, but this was false. This was true, and this was true. All right, so that's short-circuiting. It's just a matter of using the AND operator to combine multiple things. You can do it inside of if statements. You can do it as part of a ternary operator, or you can write code that just sits alone without one of these operators. Let's see if I put that, and just one final example. Inside of here, I can say that I want to check that. Well, let's do something more realistic. Objprop or objbool equals true. And I want to make sure that there is something inside of here that is true. And then I'm going to run my function f. There we go no errors, this works. So this could be a, a case where in my code what I want to do is I want to check to see that object bool is true. I want to check to make sure that there's a property called prop inside of object and it's not a falsy value. And I want to run the function f if those things happen. So it's just another way of calling a function if something is true. Just a quick one-liner. And that's one of the benefits of short-circuiting. All right, any questions, please leave them in the comments, and I will add the links to the ternary, the ternary <laughs> operator video. Thanks.